After over 30 years of selling Beatles records, I've seen a lot of rare and interesting ones. We all know that mint first pressings are the most sought after and most valuable of them all. But for some Beatles collectors, it's the minutiae on the record labels which are the most fascinating. I'm Andrew from Parlogram Auctions, and in this video, I'll take you through all the UK albums to try and find those collectible variations. So have your magnifying glasses ready as we take a deep dive into the Beatles UK label errors. When I first started collecting Beatles records in the early 1980s, detailed information about original pressings was pretty thin on the ground. Even specialist magazines such as Record Collector didn't have much information outside the mono and stereo catalogue numbers. And just look at those values. It wasn't until the coming of the internet that Beatles collectors began discovering variations between pressings, which in turn opened up a whole new area of collecting. Since then, with the help of sites like eBay and Discogs, the information is everywhere, prompting some collectors to set out on a mission to collect them all. But before we go any further, let's just be clear on what exactly we'll be looking at in this video. The term mispressing is used a lot in record collecting. By definition, a mispressing is something which has been wrongly pressed, resulting in an issue with the audio. This could be a record which has been pressed with the wrong label, or has a completely different song on one or even both sides. These mispressings are essentially factory or machine operator errors, which were never meant to leave the factory in the first place. Now I get a lot of emails from people saying that they've got a mispressed Beatles record, expecting it to be rare. Well, technically it is, but it's only worth say two to three times a regular correctly pressed copy. But that's not what serious Beatles collectors are after. The kind of pressings which excite the collectors I'm talking about in this video are the mistakes made further back in the production line and are what you would technically call misprints. These are records which have labels with incorrect or misspelled information on them, which appear in the correct form on say 99.9% .9 of other pressings. Beatles albums, as you would expect, were repressed multiple times, so it's only natural to expect these errors occurred from time to time. Although it has to be said, rarely on first pressings, which were given the most attention. The majority of errors, as you'll see in this video, come from later stereo pressings, that were done in some cases years after the first pressing. Now this doesn't include enforced changes, such as a switch in publishing companies, like the change from Dick James to Northern Songs on the Please Please Me album, or the change from Jibet to Dominion Belinda on the track Money on the With The Beatles album. Clearly, I'm not gonna be able to cover all the errors on every pressing worldwide. So in this video, I'll be focusing on just the UK albums. I'll do my best to cover them all, but do feel free to leave me a comment if I've missed one out that you know of. And who knows, we may even discover some new ones. So let's get cracking with the first one, which is one of the rarest and most difficult to spot. On the face of it, it looks like a standard third variation of the yellow and black Parlophone label from mid to late 1963. It's even difficult to spot when I put it with a regular label. Can you see it? Well done if you can. The error is that tracks five and six are switched. This label has There's a Place Before A Taste Of Honey, when of course it should be the other way around. Now I've only seen four copies of this label error and they rarely come up for sale, perhaps because it's such a hard one to spot. But it's worth checking yours because they sell for around $1,000. This is side two of a first stereo pressing of With The Beatles. Again, it's not easy. This time, it's a spelling error. The publishing credit for You Really Got A Hold On Me reads Domion, when it should be Dominion. This error also occurred on some second stereo pressings too, but not on the mono. The error on this label occurred for a very short time on this stereo pressing from around 1966 and it's something which shouldn't be there. As you know, only tracks from side one of this album were included in the film. So the text, which begins songs from the film, doesn't belong on this label. Another tiny error appeared for a very short time on side one, this time on both mono and stereo pressings. And that was, I should have known better, was misspelled as I should have no better. 
A very difficult one that, and so easy to miss, but that tiny error makes it highly collectible. This error can be found on second stereo pressings of Beatles for sale, dating from around 1968. Can you spot it? As with A Hard Day's Night, the error occurs on track two, where I'm a loser is spelt as I'm a losser. This is sometimes accompanied by a similar double S error on side two, where an extra S has been added to the word songs in the Northern Songs publishing credit for eight days a week. Both these errors appear on the stereo pressings only. Some early one box copies misspell the word world by adding an extra L. The mono labels were never reset as EMI had printed enough first pressing mono labels in 1964 to last them right up until the mono's deletion in 1969. As far as I know, Help is one of the rare albums in the UK catalogue which doesn't carry an error on any label. But if you know of one, please let me know. This stereo pressing of Rubber Soul dates from early 1969. Yep, it's that troublesome track two again. This time, it's Norwegian that's spelled incorrectly, with an unnecessary extra I before the letter G. Another different but collectible labeling error occurred in 1987, when the first digitally sourced pressings came out on a unique white Apple label instead of the standard Parlophone. Misspelt Norwegian wood labeled discs can be worth up to $500 to $750 in decent shape while white label rubber soles fetch $150 to $200. This one's a bit easier to spot. It dates from the mid-1970s, where a Columbia label was used instead of a Parlophone one. This labeling error also oddly occurred in other countries too, such as on this 1982 Australian pressing of With The Beatles. Although not technically an error label, there is one label of this album which is almost impossible to find. You may be aware that only three titles were pressed in mono using the one EMI box Parlophone label in 1969, and they were Please Please Me, Help, and Sgt Peppers. But Revolver was also planned to be released in mono on this label, but was pulled right at the last minute. Although no mono discs were printed up for that issue, some mono labels were printed, but only, it seems, side two. EMI were never a company to throw things away and were well known for using up old stock labels on later pressings, which is just what they did here. Side one of this copy has a regular 1972 EMI box stereo label and both sides of the record play in stereo. But it's that mono label which makes this copy so valuable. Copies really are like gold dust. I've only ever seen two of them. And if you find one, you can easily expect to get $1,000 from a collector. Some early Stereo One boxes of this album misspell got to get you into my life as I got to get you into my life. The other valuable pressings of this album are of course the early mono copies with the 606-1 side two matrix, which had the alternate mix of Tomorrow Never Knows and I sincerely hope they don't forget to put that mix on the forthcoming box set. Now this one is kind of easy. Can you see it? The most significant track on the album, Day in the Life, is missing. Maybe the typesetter saw the word reprise and thought that was the final track on the album. Who knows? Anyway, this error occurred on some early second mono pressings from 1968, and are usually found in plain white inners, as opposed to the red and white ones of the first pressing. But it doesn't occur on the stereo pressing. Some labels around this time added an extra dot after the word in, in the sold in UK text. But even I think that's going a little too deep into the weeds. Another error occurred one year later in 1969, after the change to the one EMI box design. Some mono labels, instead of having the XEX -E mono indicator, had the stereo YEX prefix. I've had these error labels on both mono and stereo playing copies. Here's another tough to spot spelling error. This time it's track five on side two, where raccoon is misspelt with just one C. 
This error appeared on early second pressings, but was quickly corrected. A rarer error appears on side four of this stereo pressing. Can you see it? It's on Revolution 9, which includes a lowercase e. By the way, the absence of an EMI recording text was not an error per se. It was just something which was added after the first set of labels were printed. Like help, I've not found any label errors on original pressings of this album. The only one I know of was on the 1982 mono reissue, where some, including the one I had, came with stereo labels. It's well known that Her Majesty was omitted from early side two labels, but can you spot something else missing here? It's a missing hyphen between the Lennon-McCartney credit on She Came In Through The Bathroom Window. Again, it's one which you don't see very often, and it's definitely worth checking yours for. Another rare one is this layout variation involving the position of the stereo and 33 and a third RPM indicators, which becomes clear when I change between them. I don't think I've ever seen an error on this label. However, there were, like Abbey Road, some copies which came with blank Apple labels, either on side one or side two. The final album I'll do just for the sake of completeness, even though it wasn't an official UK album, is Hey Jude. Early export copies of this on Apple came with the spacing error on Paperback Writer, which read Paper Back Writer, and had an S on Revolution which turned it into revolutions. Now values of these mispressings and indeed any other pressing depends largely on condition. Although with some of the rarer ones like the one EMI box mono revolver, it isn't so important. The best way to find out how much one is worth is to put it up for auction on eBay. Collectors scour that site for such examples all the time, so there's no danger it will get overlooked. And my advice to anyone who lists such an item on eBay is to leave it up as an auction and not to get tempted by early offers. The real bids never come in until the last 10 seconds, so hold your nerve and you will be rewarded. Of course, there are many label errors from countries all over the world, especially in the ones in which English isn't the native language, and I may do a video on those in the future. In the meantime, if you have an interesting label error, please send me an image via email or social media, links to which are in the description. In the next video, I hope to be reporting from another location, but as is the nature of things at the moment, I won't tell you too much about that at the moment. But if you're a Beatles collector, I know you're gonna love it. Anyway, that's all for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and that you'll come back for more next time. All that remains for me to do is to say bye for now and thanks for watching.